Sons of Spurs heroes Bobby Smith and Danny Blanchflower relive glory. It is an image which captures the thrill and wonder of the FA Cup and a time when Tottenham were the finest in the land. Bound by the spell are Steve Smith and Richard Blanchflower, sons of two Spurs scorers in the final against Burnley in 1962, bursting with excitement as they joined the team to parade the trophy in London on an open-top bus. For us, it encapsulates the magic of the day, says Steve, as the old friends join Sports Mail to recreate the iconic photograph. Winning the cup, being on the bus, seeing the crowds of people. I was a little kid of seven and my dad was treated like a god because he played for the Spurs and it's only when you're older that you appreciate you were lucky. When you went to White Hart Lane they'd open the door and usher you inside. It's carried me through life, really, and made me feel special and what they did was special. Nobody will ever forget that team. They'll be talking about them in another hundred years. Tottenham became the first team in the 20th century to win the Levin Cup double in 1961. They won the FA Cup again 12 months later and the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1963. Bobby Smith was their fearless centre forward, a barreling force who scored 208 goals for the club, second only in the record books to his strike partner Jimmy Greaves, and 13 and 15 games for England. May 5, Wembley. At 100,000 Burnley 1-3 Tottenham Burnley, Blacklaw, Angus, Elder, Adamson, Cummings, Miller, Connolly, McElroy, Pointer, Robson, Harris Goal, Robson 50 Tottenham, Brown, Baker, Henry, Blanchflower, Norman, Mackay, Medwin, White, Smith, Greaves, Jones Goals, Greaves 3, Smith 51, Blanchflower 80, Penn, Danny Blanchflower was the captain and leader on the pitch, intelligent and tactically astute, eloquent and outspoken. He is responsible for the stirring passage about glory which still crackles through the speakers before home games and has come to define the spirit of Spurs. The great fallacy is that the game is first and last about winning, said Belfast-born Danny, who died in 1993 aged 67. It is nothing of the kind. The game is about glory, it is about doing things in style and with a flourish, about going out and beating the other lot, not waiting for them to die of boredom. He would approve of Mauricio Pochettino's Tottenham, who go to Crystal Palace in the FA Cup fourth round on Sunday. It is a brilliant quote, agrees Richard, who was aged nine when the photograph was taken. I get annoyed when people go on about Spurs needing to win something. I'd rather see us playing attractive football. My dad always said, only one team can win the league. Only one can win the FA Cup and only one can win the League Cup. Does that make everybody else a failure? He had some great one-liners. He'd say, winning isn't everything, wanting to win is. There was a typical flash of Blanche Flower wit before the FA Cup final in 1961 as he presented his team to the Duchess of Kent. When she asked why they didn't have names on their backs like Lester, he replied, Well, ma'am, you see we all know each other. He was a thinker and an innovator. He reckoned he invented the defensive wall because the Northern Ireland goalkeeper was so bad, smiles Richard. Lots of what he said seemed obvious but I'm not sure it was. Taking a throw in, if he held the ball in his right hand before he threw it he was going to throw at that side of the player he was throwing to. If he held it in his left hand he was going to throw it that side and if he held it in both hands it would mean it's tight, give it back to me. Blanche Flower also devised the past penalty, long before Johan Cruyff. In a World Cup qualifier against Portugal in May 1957, he tapped it short to Jimmy McElroy, who scored, although a bewildered referee ordered the kick to be retaken. I remember going on holiday with the Roys to Devon, says Richard. But at Wembley in 1962 they were rivals with McElroy in the Burnley team and Blanche Flower scoring Tottenham's third with a penalty in a 3-1 win. Greaves struck first and Jimmy Robson leveled before Smith fired Spurs ahead, becoming the first to find the net in successive FA Cup finals, a feat unmatched until Arsenal's Freddie Jumper in 2002. I went with my nan and granddad and we sat near the Royal Box, says Steve. I remember craning my neck to see the Queen. 
I remember the penalty and my dad scoring. Back to goal, turned and hit it. He was a prolific scorer, a strong and bustling center forward from the days when they used to shoulder charge goalkeepers over the line. He didn't talk a lot about football but he gave me a tip once, first five minutes, son, if you get a corner, go up to the keeper and give him a whack. Bobby Smith died in 2010 at the age of 77. Jim Greaves was my hero, says Steve. The best player I've seen at Tottenham but they were all good players and they were a great footballing team and great friends. The Smiths lived in Palmer's Green, in the same street as the families of Welsh internationals Cliff Jones and Terry Medwin. The Blanche Flowers lived in nearby Southgate, where they were neighbours of Dave McKay, and Richard has fond memories of an impromptu kickabout with a tennis ball on the lawn, when the Spurs and Scotland midfield hard man played barefooted. It was like being part of a big family, says Steve. I would sit in the dressing room while Bill Nicholson was doing his team talk and Terry Dyson and one or two others would be stood on the bench having a smoke. There was a big silver tea urn and they'd have little triangular sandwiches with crusts cut off. As a kid, it was fantastic. I spent most of my childhood at the training ground in Cheshunt. We used to take penalties against Bill Brown. As stories tumble out, Richard tells how he discovered the true power packed into Smith's shooting while standing by Brown's goal during a finishing drill at Cheshunt. I went to trap it and it knocked me over, he says. Steve chuckles, oh, he could hit a ball. I saw him score at Brighton once, my god, he nearly took the keeper in the net with him. They would marvel at Alan Gilzean as he flicked a 50p coin into the air, caught it on his foot, flipped it up onto his head and then dropped it into the pocket of his shirt. They would earn pocket money packing ties into cellophane wrappers at Mackay's tie shop. Dave Mackay was a lovely guy but very competitive, says Steve. One Sunday afternoon we were all in the garden playing cricket. Mackay's in, I'm on to bowl and I got him out first ball but he wouldn't go. I ran inside and told my mum. I said, Mum, I got Dave McKay out first ball and he won't go. She said, Oh, go back out and bowl him again. He wouldn't go. I don't think Dave wanted to admit to being bowled by a seven-year-old. Steve, now 63, has retired after a career in property and Richard, 66, is a chartered surveyor. They both played amateur football and remain loyal Spurs fans and will always be bound together by their upbringing as sons of stars and a famous photograph.